and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will get an update from Margaret LaForest of the United States Naval and Shipbuilding Museum, which is on board the USS Salem at the Quincy Shipyard. First, though, as always, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, it's brisk and breezy out there, 59 degrees right now, and the wind is going to have a bit of a bite to it today with temperatures only in the upper 50s, feeling a little cooler here at the coast and down to the upper 40s under clear skies this evening. Much warmer tomorrow with less wind and abundant sunshine. Highs tomorrow will reach into the lower to perhaps mid 60s and it'll feel a lot better too without that brisk wind. Cool again tomorrow night. Temperatures drop to the mid 40s. I think Wednesday is the pick of the week. Just a few clouds around, otherwise mainly sunny, not so windy and mild. Highs Wednesday into the mid 70s. And still pretty decent here on Thursday. A few more clouds, a little cooler, but uh, still dry with highs Thursday in the low 60s. Again, we have a brisk and a breezy 59 degrees in Quincy right now. Checking out the news for you today, the Quincy City Council will begin reviewing Mayor Thomas Koch's proposed fiscal year 2024 city budget that goes into effect on July 1st tonight. The mayor says the $405 million spending plan represents an almost 9% increase over the current year's budget and will cause property taxes to rise later this year. Well, you know, under Prop 2.5, every city and town goes up on taxes every year. So they'll be going up in the fall. Um, there's no doubt about that. But we don't know yet what um, depth of that will be. I mean, there's other factors that come into play, Joe, as you know. And uh, new growth, for example, we don't get that number till really the end of the summer, early fall. Um, that's an important number. That's the new growth in value, also new growth in actual new buildings, businesses, residential properties that come in the city. That helps us offset uh, the, the uh, property taxes. The Finance Committee will hear from each department's head over the course of at least three separate meetings before they take a vote, possibly on June 20th. Now, tonight, counselors will review proposed budgets for the Fire Department, the Planning Department, Legal Department, Municipal Finance, and several others. The City Council may cut the budget or approve it as written, but they cannot add to the spending plan. New developments in Quincy would have to adhere to new energy use standards if the city decides to adopt a new specialized stretch code. Now, Quincy already adopted a code back in 2010 that emphasizes energy performance. As Councilor at Large Nina Liang explains, this new specialized stretch code would ensure that new residential and commercial construction is consistent with Massachusetts greenhouse gas limits. More recently, uh, there has been an opportunity to opt into um, any further sort of not strict, but more opportunities to, to take advantage of these green opportunities uh, in a, a form of specialized stretch code. And so not every city and town has opted into that necessarily. Um, I don't know what that would mean for us as far as cost savings go. I wanna make sure that if we were to enter into it, that any uh, cost burdens are very apparent and brought to our attention as well. And so prior to really jumping into and opting into anything that would impact not just development for individual homeowners, but for developers across the whole city. I want to make sure that we have a robust conversation about that and have all the information brought to us. And so that's how this resolve came together. It's to make sure that we understand historically how we got to this point um, and then understand the impact of this moving forward because it will set the standard, I hope, for development moving forward. Um, this tracks very closely to things that are important to me when it comes to redevelopment of the city and bringing new folks into the city as well to um, speak to what the mayor just spoke about, about the growth in this city, and of course want to make sure that we do it in a way that is sustainable for us and for the future of the city. City Councilors Noel DeBona, Ann Mahoney, James Devine, and Chuck Phelan are co-sponsoring that proposal with Liang. However, they all agree that more information is needed about the cost impacts of this specialized stretch code before it's adopted. The council placed that matter into committee for further review. Norfolk County Sheriff's Office recently opened a new office in Quincy Center. During a ribbon-cutting ceremony, Sheriff Pat McDermott of Quincy says the new location on Hancock Street will be a major improvement from their former office on the nearby parking way. The space was getting a little tired. 
Uh, it was getting expensive. So we were looking for a different place to go. We certainly didn't want to leave the city of Quincy. So I was blessed to be able to get in touch with the mayor and, and work this, uh, this, uh, this opportunity for us. Cuts our costs almost in half and uh, puts us in a better location. McDermott says the office will primarily be responsible for civil process procedures. Those include serving summonses, evictions, and making arrests for those who ignore court orders. Now, 32 different nationalities were represented during the recent second annual Multicultural Festival in Quincy. The event back on May 13th drew hundreds of people to the Four River Field in Quincy Point. They enjoyed music, and dancing, and food from a variety of cultures that make up the city. Organizers encouraged participants to dress in their native clothing and discuss their backgrounds with people of other cultures. The festival started in the public schools last year as a way to recognize the students of many different backgrounds. Organizers decided to expand the festival to include the entire community this year, and they hope it will continue to grow in the years ahead. Now, renovations at Pageant Field forced the festival to be held at the Four River Field this year, but it is expected to be back at Pageant next year. About 800 people participated in Interfaith Social Services' recent 49th annual Stop the Stigma 5K Road Race and Walk to raise money for their New Directions Mental Health Counseling Center. Participants raised a record over $120,000 to help provide free and low-cost mental health counseling to those who are uninsured or underinsured. Interfaith uses a sliding scale fee system. It's an effort to make counseling affordable for everyone. The first four counseling sessions are provided free of charge for every new client. Now, this year's participants were encouraged to sign a poster sharing who they were running or walking for on that day. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, we sit down with Margaret LaForest, president of the United States Naval and Shipbuilding Museum here in Quincy. That's next. Welcome back to the United States Naval and Shipbuilding Museum on board the USS Salem at the Quincy Shipyard is open for the season again. And the president, Margaret LaForce, is here to tell us what's new for this year. Good to see you, Margaret. Joe, so great to be here. Always Good. a pleasure. Same, same. So I was doing a little math this morning. Yes. Um, and next year, 2024, the Salem will be here in Quincy 30 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 30 years yeah. as a museum ship. It's incredible. Yeah. We were all a lot younger <laughs> back then, I, but we were both so on board when she came in. I remember we met up at the Black Falcon Terminal in, in South Boston and cruised right uh, right through the bridge and into Quincy Shipyard. Such a memorable, <laughs> memorable day for me. She, the ship herself looks way better now than than she did back then, that's for sure. Oh, 30 years ago when her her deck looked more like <laughs> the lawn with so much grass and weeds growing And through. trees, actually, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, you know, really, we're truly grateful uh, to Mayor Koch and the City Council and our Community Preservation Committee. We've been on quite the, a grant run between the city and the state with preservation dollars that we've been reinvesting into making some improvements on board. Yes. So yeah. we have a lot to talk about. We do indeed. Um, but you know, you should take some credit yourself personally because uh, you were one of the history girls from the Broadmeadows Middle School that first tried to get the USS Lexington mm -hmm. aircraft carrier here to Quincy. Wouldn't fit through the bridge, right? <laughs> yeah, well, believe me, you know, when my husband complains about boat maintenance, I'm like, Phew. <laughs> Try a 717-foot heavy cruiser, and now I'm just grateful I don't have carrier-sized boat problems. Exactly, right? yes, <laughs> so, yeah. You know, um, yeah, some classmates and I, we uh, had a school project, and uh, what does the closing of the yard mean to the community, your family, and the economy? Yeah. And our teacher, Mr. Adams, really posed, you know, experiential learning and social justice at yes. an era before nobody, anybody was talking about exactly. that. So, yeah, it's great. Uh, it's been quite a legacy of that, and uh, my class was kind of the the uh, pioneer. Yeah, so. very, very much so. And I'm still connected. Yeah. With, uh, Are you real? I was yeah, going to ask Mr. you, do you Adams. still keep in touch with? Okay. Oh yeah, he's, he's still, uh, we're Facebook friends and okay. he's always given us the thumbs up and yeah. encouragement, which is great because 
it was uh, honestly the support of the municipality, of the teachers, of the school, of the elected officials, Mayor Sheets at the time. That's right. You know, uh, Tom Coke was then chief uh, executive secretary, I think was the title of the, the time. Sheets administration. The yes. Sheets administration, yeah. yeah. So it's quite a history. And, you know, as you know, Quincy celebrates 400 years in 2025. That's right. So we are trying to be ship shape. Okay. And uh, a lot of, of the that. improvements on deck are, are leading up to that culmination. Yeah, well, that's something that's exciting to look it forward is. to. You mentioned the community preservation uh, yeah. fund, two hundred fifty thousand dollars this that year. That was this year's ask. Yeah, yeah, just shy of two hundred thousand last year. Okay, and we've been able to leverage it with matching grants against the state. Great. So. Um, some exciting projects. Should we tell you what we've got going on? Let's do it. Yeah, yeah this so, is it. Yeah. Um, one of the things we talk about in now that we are over at Pier 3, interior to the shipyard versus our former pier I know. under the bridge, which is so much more visible and easier to get to. Yeah. We hear that a lot, but uh, it's called friendship lights, and you have a line, a, a tension cable that goes from your bow up to the mast, and then from the mast down to the stern, mm -hmm. right? So you see some of like the tall ships in Boston mm -hmm. have this real visibility. Mm -hmm. So we're about to light the ship up to look like Las Vegas. Seriously? I think. Yeah. The uh, local seven was just on board, our iron workers and riggers, to help us with the tension cable that's in place. We're uh, working on it this weekend, okay. and you know, fingers crossed, flipping the switch to light her up in. Uh, in the next two weeks. Next two weeks? Is there, yeah. Do you have a date yet? or uh, We don't. Okay. We're, we're going to see how the work goes this weekend. We okay. are just getting so close. So it's going to be great, especially with the spectacular backdrop of the Forver Bridge and yes. the various colors. And yeah, so that's a that's a big project that's for us. That's exciting, yeah. yeah well, talk about not being able to find it. That will certainly <laughs> help folks hone in on it, right? Yeah. You see that lit up. Yeah, follow the lights. Yeah. So but that's uh, we get, uh, crew of volunteers leading the charge on that project, which yeah. is exciting. But again, some of the skilled labor of the trades organizations that they donated with their apprentice program really helped get that pro project to the finish line. So that's exciting. And then that leads, um, the next step is what they call a dress ship. So uh, back when the ship would be in service, the ship would have been dressed certain days designated by the Navy. So for example, the ship's birthday would be a day. Hmm. Um, you know, Navy Day would be a day. Okay. Fourth of July would be a day, right? So, so um, days that are designated, and so the first time that we are going to dress ship, I, I'm hoping, yep. fingers crossed here, yep. um, since she was in service, we're hoping if all of our flags arrive in time, yep. and, and it's crunch time, we're T-minus a month here, <laughs> uh, but for Flag Day this year. So we'll keep you posted oh, if okay. we can pull an event off around that. Like I said, we're, we're coming in hot, the wire, the tension wire is in place, and just waiting if the flags arrive in time. They're custom made, right? Oh. So you've got oh, really? three okay. sets of four foot signal flags that come the glad rags, and, huh. and you string them on the up and overs, and she'll really look spectacular. So, you know, we were putting these projects together knowing 30 years as a museum, 400 years as a community right. in 2025. And so we're hoping to kind of preview that and that'll really get some attention. I see it will, yeah. So yeah. Flag Day, but the actual Flag Day you're hoping? Well, you know, Qu Flag Day is so important here in the city of Quincy, right? Huge, I mean, right, yeah. <laughs> so, so we would do it on, not on Flag Day, the parade day, there's so much happening, right. but actually Flag Day is the designated Navy Day. So if we can pull okay. it off, we will keep you posted. Please We'd love do. to have QATV present. We'd love to be us. there, yeah. It would be really uh, a milestone day Exciting for stuff, us. yeah. Yeah. I, I remember Actually, I remember the last time you were here, um, you said, quote unquote, bunting for days. <laughs> <laughs> so then there's the next level of we have these pictures when the ships would be christened of yeah. how much bunting it would be. And, you know, after having the Hancock Adams Common opening and seeing downtown so beautifully yeah. dressed or, you know, the General's Bridge dedication, yeah. it, really we want to be able to participate in such events. So custom bunting was probably on <laughs> next year's docket, okay. but it is coming. It okay. is coming, yes. All right. And, you know, I mean, the ship already has cannon on board, so maybe oh, so, <laughs> blast off some of those. So <laughs> you're, you're going to laugh, and I should show you this video but a couple of the other projects that are on deck and we probably have dedicated you know a hundred thousand dollars here uh, the main battery director when you come on board yeah. right at the top the top of uh, the stack pretty rusty that's scheduled to be preserved uh, eight of our three inch guns are also on deck and our cranes so it's like this is the you know most cosmetic deteriorated mm -hmm. infrastructure that's really difficult right because of the mechanisms of say the guns and so those are all scheduled this calendar year to be completed we had some funding from the city last um, awarded last fiscal year okay. but with the supply chain the industrial paints things that we needed uh, we're now going to align to do that work this spring okay. so that's pretty exciting 
but the thought would be the other museum ships, geez, Joe, I hope I don't get in trouble here, <laughs> bearing the lead, but um, the other museum ships have retrofitted some of the guns to fire with propane ceremonially. Really? And so I had that opportunity down when I was at the Historic Navy Ships Association Conference at the Battleship Alabama. And uh, they were having a World War II reenactment that day. Okay. And they were, they, their reenactors fired the guns with really? the propane. And so I said to the guy, like, you, you got to let me on there. You got to do this. So we shared the video on Facebook. It was really great fun. Uh -huh, and, uh -huh. and then, of course, everybody's like, now that Margaret's back in Quincy, can we, why, can we, do, this? Can we do the same thing in Quincy? So yeah. we're working on how that could happen. Okay. You know, the other museum ships all do it. Obviously, we'd need to, you know, go through the right channels here <laughs> to make that happen. But ah. I know <laughs> the saluting gun, we actually, yeah. um, the saluting gun, and you see like the yacht clubs yeah, yeah. ceremoniously, they like, fire, fire their little small cannons. Sure. So we're not going to be firing the cannons and projectiles but there's opportunities to re retrofit these saluting guns wow. so as we took it 2025 when you know chief of staff um, McConville rolled in with his howitzer downtown for the bridge generation <laughs> all I could think was like go Navy beat army hey Dunford <laughs> let's roll on down what, are, what do we got to, to, to play back with yeah, right yeah. no exciting so stuff we're trying yeah we're okay. trying all right so there's a lot in the pipeline you know part of the pun yeah, uh, yeah we do speaking of before and after we do have some photos uh, sure we can show folks maybe you can explain a little bit about what we're looking at because it's, it's and it's all been done by volunteers right? yeah um, well, a majority some things are contracted but let's see yeah, what you got but for the most part okay so here's kind of a just an overall view yep of, so uh, open for admission yep. it's only 10 to 12 dollars okay. so it's really reasonable we do offer opportunities for functions on board okay. birthday parties guided group tours school groups things like that okay what are the hours right now Margaret yep so we're open weekends 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. so Saturdays, Saturdays and Sundays Come July and August, we do open on Fridays. Our goal is to get us open on a Wednesday to Sunday schedule. Mm. We're not there yet. Okay. We need to bring our visitation up. Where post COVID, we're at twenty five percent of our visitation. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, even the National Park Service isn't opening until June seventh this year. The, the tourism mm -hmm. industry has been really hard hit. For the same hit, reason, yeah. especially in Greater Boston, yeah. we had visitors on board from Scotland yesterday. Is that so right? we typically cover all fifty states and yeah. a variety of far, foreign country visitors. So okay. all right. the, the visitors are here. Yeah. And it's very affordable. So, I mean, that's you could bring a whole family and, you know. For sure. Yeah, for short money. So, uh, great before and after here. Yeah, so this is actually a volunteer project. This is one that um, the Tin Can Sailors is a group uh, of guys that come up every year. Oh. And they really s tackle some of our bigger projects. So, we actually, with some funding for a grant, got them a scissor lift this year. We're trying to, trying to get our way on board. Yep. But you see that they're running needle guns. And anyone who served in the Navy, well, everybody, if you're at sea, everybody paints. So, we got needle guns running. Oh. And it's transformed. You see the before and after photos yeah, here. Yeah, it really does, and I'm sure it, it lifts the spirits um, of not only the volunteers but the visitors too. You know, when they see like a <laughs> dramatic change from here. Yeah. Yeah. So here's one of our gun mounts, yeah. right? And so you, you're, it's. it's Mount 56 uh, project is completed, and so we have various projects that are happening that are now complete, and then there's more gun mounts. There's eight, like I mentioned, that are getting the actual guns, so this is another area, yeah. um, the, the shield around it, but if you can see inside, I don't know if we have a gun picture, it's really in tough shape. But now it's the splinter shields of all in here can do. The intricacies of, say, the guns. We need a professional contractor. And so we've hired uh, Jag Painting. They're a veteran-owned company. Oh. They do work down at Battleship Cove, oh. so they're familiar. Because oh, okay. it's not just the easiest. Hey, punting contractor, could you come aboard and paint my, you know, <laughs> three-inch My World gun? War II <laughs> yeah. era, you know, steamship at the right. time, right? Right. Battle yep. cruiser, yep. yeah. So you see the, the, um, the eight-inch gun barrels yep. here. And it just, it just, it's a marked difference. Uh, and the neat thing about the Salem is it was never really dismantled or, or you know, taken apart. When, when you look about museum ships around the country, yeah. you know, we're the envy. Exactly. And now below right. decks, we're, 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 sh we're shining. Yeah. Upper, uh, above, you know, we're struggling. Yeah. You know, here you can see um, one of, this is, um, I'm sorry, on the port side. Yep. And we have a sister one on the starboard side. The okay. starboard side one still needs to be completed. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Now, at one point, I know that there was a, or there maybe still is, a helipad in the, yeah. the stern of the ship for a so helicopter. So it's the hangar, the and hangar. Um, okay. that's something that this year was interesting. You can see this YouTube video, um, Battleship New Jersey is a YouTube channel by one of our other museum ships, mm -hmm. and they have come up and filmed us because they're, you know, just really, the content's really resonating. And so the hangar, they did a video of our hangar, and 
the carriers, of course, have, have hangar decks, yeah. but none of the other museum ships have this, so it's really unique. And we just put into this year's grant some preservation work uh, for that hangar space. So it's not really on the public tour route, okay. but it's an area we kind of use it for storage, right? Like I the see. snow blow, elevator comes up, the snow blower, right. and the heavy stuff goes down. Right, yeah. It, but it, it's pretty great. I had uh, an elevator ride. Uh, <laughs> did you really? <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. I did, I did. It's a special space, but... Um, so we're trying to see what could we do, or as we look forward to celebrating milestone events, could we utilize that space? Mm -hmm. How could we? Um, but you can check out the, the New Jersey YouTube video. Okay. I'll share that on our, on our Facebook later okay. just for, for people of interest. But yeah, um, the museum trips around the country, most of them were you know parts taken off of them and given to others right. or uh, retrofitted. For example, New Jersey served in World War II, then came back and later served our country. Where Salem was maintained, and when she was put into mothballs down in Philadelphia, she was the furthest furthest ship out, right? Okay. So those closest to the dock, well, that's what they got you scavenged. Start, right, yeah. And so for us, it's really spectacular. Huh. I had crew members on board this weekend from the Des Moines, a sister ship, yes. and three officers and their wives traveling uh, from around the country and came to Boston for a great tour. And it's like they got to sit in the wardroom and have have their lunch the same way they would have back just, in the day, just like they right? Would have, but right. it's literally everything is made maintained as it was. So it's a very unique experience. We do let pe visitors get down to the engine room. We have one of them on the tour route. The others are closed. Our, our combat information center will is really like the heart of the ship. The CIC, the as CIC, they call it. Yeah. Yes. So um, we'll bring visitors down there. Yeah. But our our exhibit spaces, kind of those are some of like the bunk rooms we've retrofitted for exhibits. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them is our military weapons and archives. Mm -hmm. We have items, uh, weapons from every conflict the U.S. has been involved in dating back to the revolution. Really? Both American and foreign. And uh, off of that is our, our archives. We're undergoing a major uh, project to digitize our collection. Super, yeah. Because it's difficult. We recognize, yeah. you know, visiting a 19, 1940s era, World War II, you know, post-World War II, actually, mm -hmm. um, a Navy vessel is not easily to climb aboard. Right. Yeah, yep. people want to enjoy that experience or see things from their collection or, you know, geez, I wonder if they have something from a ship a family member was in. Right. And likely we do. You know, when the shipyard closed back in that late 80s, um, the Salem and the U.S. Naval Shipbuilding Museum gained that repository. And so, so many, you know, neighbors of Quincy really donated items for us. And so they're, they've are they been stored for safekeeping, but now it's a matter of can we photograph those, catalog those, launch those in a digital collection. So that's something that we put into funding for this year's Community Preservation Grant, and then have a matching grant that we plan to apply for in the fall. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we could really have we need a full-time curator to really focus yeah. there, but we're operating solely with volunteers right now until yeah. our, our revenues get back. Talking about that, um, how many volunteers do you have? How many do you need? What opportunities are there? Yeah, yeah. so, um, well, you know what? We probably have a, a crew of maybe 50, but not okay. everybody is local. Some people come a couple times a year, right? So like this group that comes in, um, the Tin Can Sailors group, they come in, but they're there for a week twice a year, right? Okay. So we don't see them. And yeah. there's the guys that are the Wednesday crew. We're close to the public and projects are getting done. Yep. On, uh, you know, Saturdays and Sundays when we're open, uh, there's anything from, you know, res preservation projects happening to, you know, welcome to Walmart, be a docent, <laughs> okay. great visitors, uh, or you want to, talk about, you know, being in the archives, digitizing the collection. I mean, there's just a variety. Um, I would say the, a lot of the tasks are that kind of skilled labor, trades labor. Uh, to all the retirees whose, whose wives are trying to get them out of the house, we're a great <laughs> place and we have a great group of people. Yep, okay. You know, that's kind of the bulk of our volunteers who we have helping is kind of that hands-on preservation maintenance projects. Gotcha, okay. But, we, you know, we have youth volunteers too. We've uh, had Eagle Scout projects on board and um, kids who are considering a mass maritime mm -hmm. or the service, mm -hmm. you know, they are looking for an outlet for high school and uh, we've had great experience there too so it's really all ages it's multi-generational uh, I myself do most of the business end of, yeah. of the of the organization uh, so you're not gonna see me running the, running the needle gun <laughs> right right not yet anyway no. yeah. <laughs> things get tough you'll yeah. be hauling the anchor yourself yeah right, right. No, geez. no but a lot to get involved in and really we welcome anyone who's interested okay um, are you going to be staying in Pier 3 for the time being? For the, well, believe me, I don't have any money to move us any well, elsewhere. Well, right, uh, yeah. Pier 3 is, 
you know, where we are currently. You okay. have to go through the entrance by Pete's Pub. Which at least the entrance is more defined now, Ca so you can see that Cashman's better. done a beautiful yes. job, right? The yeah. Quincy Shipyard, kind of Irish-themed theme tugboat entrance, right? So uh, as you come in, it's industrial. You go over the train tracks, yep. go past the Cashman yep. office building. You're, you're going the right west. way, even though you think yeah, you aren't. You're yeah, going so the right way. We've yeah. talked to them about how do we improve <laughs> the visitor experience yeah. coming in to find us. But uh, no, we've been very grateful. We're not the easiest tenant. We recognize right. that. Yeah. But uh, no, right now that's that is our home okay. and you know the permanence of our home is still still remains um to be determined okay. right we right. Uh, know we're there and uh th things are things are going well and soon look for the lights and flags yeah so i think that's <laughs> it it's like how do, you help, how do we help you find us come yeah, on in that ought to do it that should do it that should get some attention thanks so much margaret always great to talk to you appreciate it same joe and please come back thanks we'll do all right just enough time to uh, check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Looks like what you see is what you get out there. It'll be uh, breezy and brisk with some sunshine and clouds. Highs in the upper 50s here along the coast. A little warmer inland. Look at tonight. We're down again to the upper 40s under clear skies. Tomorrow looks really nice. Less wind, lots of sun, mid 60s. That's good stuff. And uh, warmer on Wednesday, mid 70s. Cooling down again with a few clouds around here on Thursday, but staying dry for most of this week. Thanks again. Going out to Margaret LaForest from the United States Naval and Shipbuilding Museum. Thanks, Joe. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching Friday here on the program. Irene Lutz will stop by from Quinn Cycles. Meantime, check out our website. It's QATV.org. There you will find our latest programs. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and a lot more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great week.